welcome dear students today our topic of deliberation is methodology of cladistics the objectives of today's deliberation are to describe the set of methods used in cladistic analysis that is making an evolutionary assumption selection of characters of evolutionary interest description and measurement of character states ascertaining homologies of characters and character states construction of character state networks determining polarity of character state networks cladogram construction constructing classification based upon cladograms cladistic analysis is the main approach of classification used in contemporary evolutionary biology cladistics as you have already learned is a particular method of hypothesizing relationships among organisms like other methods it has its own set of assumptions procedures and limitations cladistics is now accepted as a best method available for phylogenetic analysis for it provides an explicit and testable hypothesis of organismal relationships the cladistic method interprets each character state transformation implied by the distribution of shared character state among taxa or other terminal as a potential piece of evidence for grouping the pattern of relationships and evolutionary change derived from cladistic analysis may be used for a variety of purposes like phylogenetic classification studies on adaptation or speciation biogeography and molecular clock dating just students let's go through the detailed methodology of cladistics depending upon the types of data and algorithms for tree construction that are used the procedures for cladistic analysis and classification will vary nonetheless a general set of procedures used is as number 1 making evolutionary assumptions for example select evolutionary units determine monophyletic groupings number 2 select characters of evolutionary interest Number 3 describe and measure character states. Number 4 ascertain homologies of the characters and character states. Number 5 construct character state networks. Number 6 determine polarity of character state networks. Primitive versus derived condition that is routing the character state network to form character state trees. Number 7 cladogram construction. Number 8 construct classification based upon cladograms just students you might have got a glimpse of various steps used in cladistic analysis now let's go through the detailed methodology the first step in cladistic analysis is making evolutionary assumptions the first issue to make evolutionary assumptions without which any cladistic analysis cannot be accomplished The evolutionary units selected must represent units appropriate for questions being asked and often these are species. The evolutionary units selected may include living or fossil organisms. Both the interest of the investigator and the nature of question being asked obviously will affect the selection of taxa. Taxon selection includes both the group as a whole called the study group or the in group and the individual unit taxa often termed as operational taxonomic units or OTUs some caution should be taken in choosing which taxa to study first the OTUs must be well circumscribed and delimited from another second the study group itself should be large enough so that all probable closely related OTUs are included in the analysis The OTU selected must represent units appropriate for the questions being asked. The entire group of OTUs being considered should represent a monophyletic unit. Dear students, after taxa are selected, the next step in the phylogenetic study is actual selection and definition of characters. Generally, those features should be utilized that are genetically determined and heritable termed as intrinsic. The characters that are relatively invariable within an evolutionary taxonomic units and the characters that denote clear discontinuities from other similar characters and character states. Characters used in phylogenetic analysis are usually conceptually divided into two classes. Number 1, the morphological characters, essentially equivalent to non-molecular features such as morphology 
anatomy, embryology, balanology, and some aspects of reproductive biology. Number second, the molecular characters derived from genetic data such as DNA sequences. In morphological analysis, characters are usually selected from which primitive and derived states can be recognized with confidence. This is based on the distribution of states within the study group and in related texts and other considerations. The selection of molecular characters is relatively straightforward in that base pair sites are the characters and the states are the four possible bases. With molecular data, the alignment, especially handling of insertions and deletions, instead becomes the challenge, plus deciding which sequence should be used in analysis. This becomes essentially a statistical effort. Characters that show high levels of conservatism or low levels of variance within a population are also preferred. Characters that show high genetic heritabilities have also been advocated. One also seeks characters that are evolutionary. Dear students, the third step in cladistic analysis is the description of character state. Because phylogenetic systematics entails the recognition of evolutionary transformation from one state to another, an important requirement of character analysis is that character states be discrete or discontinuous from one another. Molecular characters and their states are usually discrete. For some morphological qualitative characters such as corolla color, the discontinuity of state is clear. For example, the corolla is white in some texts and pink in others. But for other features, character states may not actually be clearly distinguishable from one another. This lack of discontinuity often limits the number of available characters and is often the result of variation of feature either within a texa or between texa. Because character states must be clearly discrete from one another in order to be used in cladistic analysis, they must be evaluated for discontinuity. Although Many characters in cladistic analysis tend to be constructed with only two states, especially with morphological data. Sometimes the features involved are more complex and are best treated as multi-state characters. Several ways to code multi-state characters, especially morphological ones, have been proposed, ranging from treating all observed variations as a single character in a non-linear, non-additive transformation series, that is, allowing only one step between any two states, to many characters, each with presence absence state. Another difficulty with character coding is how to deal with characters that are polymorphic, that is, those that have presence of more than one character states within the terminal taxon. Many workers simply exclude polymorphic data, but this seems an unsatisfactory alternative. Another issue relating to characters and states is whether they should be ordered or not. What this means is whether the state can convert from one to another equally or whether specified steps are required. Most workers tend towards using unordered character states. An important point to consider in character selection and definition generally with non-molecular data is whether there is possible correlation of characters. Character correlation is an interaction between what are defined as separate characters but are actually components of a common structure, the manifestation of a single evolutionary novelty. Two or more characters are correlated if a change in one always accompanies a corresponding change in other. If characters appear to be correlated, they should either be combined into a single character or scaled, such that each component character gets a reduced weight in phylogenetic analysis. Dear students, the next step in cladistic analysis is the assessment of homology. Homology returns as an important topic in cladistics because the cornerstone of analysis depends on comparison of homologous features. Characters or character states of two or more texts or homologous if the same features were present in the common ancestor of the texts. Texts with homologous features are presumed to share a common ancestry. 
The determination of homology is one of the most challenging aspects of the phylogenetic study and may involve a variety of criteria. Generally, homology is hypothesized based on some evidence of similarity, either direct similarity, for example, of structure, position, or development, or similarity via a gradation series, for example, intermediate forms between character states. Homology should be assessed for each character of all taxa in the study, particularly of those taxa having similarly termed character states. Hypotheses of homology are tested by means of cladistic analysis. The totality of characters are used to infer the most likely evolutionary tree. And the original assessment of homology is checked by determining if convergences or reversals must be invoked to explain the distribution of character states on a final cladogram. Dear students, with the homologies of the states in different evolutionary units affirmed, the next step is to order the states among all evolutionary units of the study group into a character state network. This includes the establishment of logical connection among the states of characters that presumably represent an evolutionary sequence within the study group. Parsimony, or the simplest logical arrangement of states, is the guiding criteria here. This does not necessarily mean that evolution of states in a particular collection of evolutionary units has gone that way, but if there is no evidence to the contrary, it's useful viewpoint and a way of proceeding with the analysis. Dear students, the next step in cladistic analysis is the determination of polarity. For cladistic analysis, the character states for each character are arranged in a sequence known as transformation series or morphic line. Transformation series represents the hypothesized sequence of evolutionary change from one character state to another in terms of direction and probability. A final aspect of character state transformation is the assignment of polarity. Polarity is the designation of relative ancestry to the character state of a morphocline. Not surprisingly, different options have been prevailed as to which criteria are valid for the recognition of primitive conditions of character states. Some of the determinants of polarity are number 1. Outgroup comparison. Outgroup comparison has been accepted and employed more than any other criteria of polarity. Outgroup analysis involves looking at the distribution of character state in the most closely related group at the same and the common conditions that are regarded as most primitive for the study group. The idea is that primitive character states were present in the common ancestor of the in-group and out-group and will still be found prevalently in the out-group. Number second is the in-group analysis. In-group analysis involves looking at the distribution of character states among evolutionary units of a study group. And those features most prevalent are judged to be most primitive. The third determinant of polarity is the developmental processes. These can be powerful indicators of polarity if such data are available. The criteria used most frequently is ontogenic states, the biogenetic rule, which is the modification of more familiar Hackleyan recapitulation, that is, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. This criteria declares that during the ontogeny of related evolutionary units, the state of character revealed early is likely to reflect the primitive condition. The second criteria that uses developmental data is the occurrence of minor abnormalities of organogenesis. If a morphological condition arises in the taxon that ordinarily has a contrasting condition, it can be inferred in some cases that the abnormal condition might be a primitive state. The third developmental criteria is the occurrence of vestigial organs. Whether this absence of structure is primitive or derived depends upon the group concerned and its near relatives. For example, carporate ray florets, that is, without stamens in esterase, are derived in relation to discoid hermaphrodite florets, but primitive with reference to neuter rays, that is, complete absence of sexual parts. The fourth determinant of polarity is the fossil records. 
Another obvious criteria for determining prematureness is that in a series of fossils, the stratigraphically oldest fossil will be regarded as more premature of the lineage and all of its states will be treated as premature ones. Dear students, let us now look at the methods of cladogram construction. Prior to cladogram construction, the characters and character states for each taxon are tabulated in a character taxon matrix. In order to analyze the data, the characters and the character states must be assigned a numerical value. In doing so, the character states are assigned non-negative integer values, typically beginning with zero. In the character taxon matrix, polarity is established by including one or more outgroup taxa as a part of character taxon matrix and subsequently rooting the tree by placing the outgroups at the extreme base of the final cladogram. Let us consider a cladogram construction of genus X based on following characters. Number 1. Leaf shape. Its character states are E. Elliptical and L. Lanceolate. Number 2. Habit. The character states are S. Shrub and H. Herb. The third character is the petal number and the character states are 5 and 4. The fourth character is the flower color and the character states are yellow and red. The fifth character is the stem in number and the character states are 4, 2 and 5. The sixth character is the pollen surface and the character states are spiny and smooth. The characters and the character states are arranged in the form of a table as shown in table 1. The transformation series for the above listed characters will be constructed after assigning numerical values to the character states as for leaf shape 0 is assigned to elliptical and 1 for lanceolate. For habit, 0 is assigned for shrub and 1 for herb. For petal number, 0 is assigned to 5 and 1 is assigned to when petal number is 4. For flower color, 0 is assigned to yellow and 1 is assigned to red. For stem in number, 0 is assigned to 5, 1 is assigned to 4 and 2 is assigned to 2. For pollen surface, 0 is assigned to smooth and 1 is assigned to spiny. The character taxon matrix is constructed as illustrated in table 2. For cladogram constriction, the data is supplied by the character taxon matrix. Step 1. The operational evolutionary units are grouped together as lineages arising from a common ancestor above the point of attachment of the outgroup that yields an unresolved cladogram, illustrated in the figure. Step 2. The derived character states, apomorphies, are identified and used to sequentially link the sets of texa. Although traditionally cladograms were generated largely based on morphological characters and originally calculated by hand, computational phylogenetics are now commonly used in phylogenetic analysis. Computerized phylogeny reconstruction algorithms available today permit a more precise tabulation of number of steps occurring between each pair of character states through a character step matrix. The matrix consists of listing of character states in a top row and left column. Intersecting numbers with the matrix indicate the number of steps required growing from states in the left column to the states in the top row. Types of cladistic algorithms for tree construction are number 1. Parsimony The types of cladistic algorithms for tree construction used most frequently are those of parsimony, which attempt to minimize the number of character state changes among evolutionary units. A second type of algorithms are character compatibility. Another cladistic algorithm and one that relies on very different assumption is character compatibility. As Meckham stated, character compatibility analysis is a technique that reveals patterns of agreement and disagreement among characters in a data set. Characters are compatible if they are correlated in their change in evolutionary directionality within a particular study group. The approach involves visualizing the compatibilities among characters in a data matrix and comparing one to each other. The next step is to detect cliques among the characters, that is, those that share compatibilities. Taxon trees are then constructed that correspond to each clique. 
maximum likelihood. A third approach to cladistic analysis includes maximum likelihood methods. These choose the particular tree that gives highest probability of yielding the observed data and are not simple algorithms. Maximum likelihood, although an old statistical concept credited to R.A. Fisher, was first suggested to be applicable to reconstructing phylogeny by Edwards and Cavalli Froza. Likelihood methods were more readily accepted with DNA sequences because it's easier to hypothesize models of nucleotide evolutionary change than it's with morphological data. Bayesian inference The most recent algorithm for phylogeny reconstruction is the Bayesian inference. Bayesian inference is similar to maximum likelihood in that it also employs a likelihood function. Implementation of Bayesian inference is through use of Marco Chain Monte Carlo methods, which is the process whereby the posterior distribution of parameters is sample, that is, approximately the posterior probability of different hypotheses. The existence of numerous algorithms for tree construction has led to an interest in determining which ones might be most accurate reflections of phylogeny. Some cladistics believe that because evolution is largely parsimonious, it suffices simply to adapt one of the parsimony methods. A more sophisticated view has resulted in development of many statistical and topological evaluations of cladograms. Dear students, once a robust cladogram is generated, the pattern of relationships and evolutionary change may be used for a variety of purposes, most important being generation of phylogenetic classifications. The pattern of evolutionary history portrayed in a cladogram may be used to classify Texa phylogenetically. A phylogenetic classification may be devised by naming and ordering monophyletic groups in a sequential, hierarchical classification, sometimes termed as an indented method. The hierarchically arranged monophyletic groups may be assigned standard taxonomic ranks. In our hypothetical example of genus X with five species, the formal classification will be as Genus X with 5 species, subgenus X with species B and species A, subgenus ECD species, section XE with species E, subgenus XCD with species C and species D. This most common type of phylogenetic classification is sometimes termed as node base because it recognizes a node of cladograms and all the descendants of that common ancestor as a basis for grouping. A node base classification may specify a crown clade, one in which both or all branches from the common ancestor contain extant members. In some cases, it may be valuable to recognize a group that is stem-based, that is, one that includes the stem, internode region, just above a common ancestor plus all the descendants of that stem. A stem-based group may be equivalent to a total clade, one that includes a crown clade plus all other texa that share a recent common ancestor with a crown clade but not with other crown clades. A stem-based classification might be useful, for example, in including both a well-defined and corroborated node-based monophyletic group plus one or more fossil lineages that arise along the stem. The lineages below the crown clade. The paraphyletic stem may contain some but not all of the apomorphies possessed by node-based crown clade. Yet a third general type of phylogenetic classification is apomorphy-based, in which all members of monophyletic group that share a given unique evolutionary event as illustrated in the figure are grouped together. Dear students, in conclusion, phylogenetic classification of Texa has the tremendous advantages being based on and of reflecting evolutionary history of group in question. The classifications generated by cladistic methods are objective, repeatable and efficient. The International Code of Nomenclature has been used very successfully to assign taxonomic names based on criteria of monophyly. Phylogenetic classification have resulted in several name changes in some groups, but these are gradually beginning to stabilize, particularly with additional robust molecular studies. 
Dear students, this brings us to the end of lecture on methodology of cladistics. Hope you enjoyed this lecture. Have a nice day.